Well, good evening and thank you for joining us for Crime 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Amanda Rowley. Mark is off tonight. Let's get started. Convicted Freeman High School shooter Caleb Sharp has been resentenced to 25 years to life. In 2017, the 15 year old Sharp shot and killed one student and seriously injured three other students at the school in Rockford. I was in court today as the judge handed down his decision. At the resentence hearing for the Freeman High School shooter, the judge agreed to go forward with attorney's recommendations for the high end of the sentencing range. For count one, aggravated murder, the judge sentenced Caleb Sharp to 25 years to life in prison. The three counts of attempted murder and the second degree assault charge will run at the same time, which means he will serve a total of 25 years to life in prison. And I want to be sure that my feelings are at the very least heard. Amy Strahan was the only witness who took the stand to read a statement today. She is the mother of Sam Strahan, the Freeman High School student who died in the shooting. The wounds from that day remain deeply painful. This, coming here and doing this again, very painful. I'm here for Sam, and I will always show up for him, regardless of how much this hurts me. In 2022, the shooter was originally sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. But in April, the Washington State Court of Appeals decided that sentence was too long. This is what prompted the resentencing. The deputy prosecutor acknowledged the impact this has on families returning to court today. Even given the laws that have changed, because they have changed, and unfortunately they've changed uh, in such a way, as you heard from Ms. Strahan, that victims often get devalued. Uh, they come here for a resentencing um, because the laws have changed. At the end of 25 years, the convicted shooter can petition for parole. Well, the woman charged for conspiring to commit international kidnapping will not be spending any time in jail. Nadia Cole pleaded not guilty today and was released. Cole is the fiance of Aaron Ung, the man charged with international kidnapping of his two year old daughter. This case started back in May after Cole disappeared from Seattle's airport instead of boarding a flight with her family. Court records show Cole and Ung crossed the US Mexico border. The two stayed in Mexico with his daughter for about a month. In court today, prosecutors say they are currently not seeking jail time for Cole and she was released. Taking a break from the headlines, let's take a look at the scorching hot forecast we're looking at this weekend. Meteorologist Michelle Boss has more. Hi, Michelle. Weather impact alert days over the weekend with near record heat expected. We tied a record today. Uh, possible we could do that over the weekend as well. So if you were headed out to the fair, your best chance of getting the coolest temperatures is to go first thing in the morning. So taking a look at the forecast for Saturday, temperatures in the upper 70s by 10 a.m. Scorching heat mid afternoon, temperatures in the low to mid 90s and uh, even late at night. It'll still be around 80 degrees by 9 p.m. So uh, just watch out for that right now. 73 in Spokane, 59 in Sandpoint, still just under under 80 in Lewiston, 84 in Grand Coulee, 74 in Moses Lake. Heat advisory continues through Saturday night. High temperatures in the mid 90s to low 100s. It won't be that much cooler on Sunday, but we should have more cloud cover, so that might help out a little bit. Right now, radar and satellite are pretty much clear all across the inland northwest. No precipitation and certainly not much cloud cover. Clear, clear skies expected tonight. Could be a little bit on the hazy side tomorrow, even with mostly sunny skies. Temperatures are headed to the mid 90s on Saturday and low to mid 90s on Sunday. All right, thank you, Michelle. Governor Jay Inslee was in town earlier today speaking with the Latinos and Spokane. After meeting with the Latinos and Spokane team, the governor held a round of roundtable discussion, recognizing the work they are doing in climate action. The organization also shared with the governor about how they serve the local Latino community with pro bono legal services, immigration services, food distribution and social work. These folks who come here, they establish businesses and they grow when we can give them just a little help. Governor Inslee also had the opportunity to tour the rest of the Latinos in Spokane building. 
The Washington GOP is suing King County to challenge the recount in one of the closest elections in Washington state history. The party hoped two Republicans would end up on the ballot in the November race for the state public lands commissioner. After a mandatory recount by hand, Republican Jamie Hara Butler leads with the most votes. And this week, the Secretary of State certified results showing Democrat Dave Up the Grove advancing to November with 49 more votes than Republican Sue Key. Peterson. Now, Republicans endorsed Peterson, and so they believe so-called cure ballots could have swayed the results. That means when campaigns track down voters who didn't properly sign their ballot envelopes ahead of a recount. Republican leaders say some of those ballots should not have counted. I'm not sure this was necessarily malfeasance or anything, but we're concerned about the process and how these cured ballots were in some cases rejected. King County used a third party website to cure ballots. The lawsuit filed yesterday alleges that violates a state law surrounding privacy and security protocols. Now we asked Spokane County's auditor if they use a third party cure to, to cure ballots. We'll share their response when we get it. And now to Night Beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. Moments of relief for a seven-year-old girl who spent the night lost in the woods in Clark County, Washington. That seven-year-old girl was carried to safety by deputies who spent the whole night looking for her. This all happened in early August. Newly released video, you can see the little girl perched on a steep hill as rescuers worked to get her down safely. The girl had wandered away from her grandparents' campsite and went missing. She spent the night in the woods, scared and alone. The next morning, a local fisherman heard a girl calling for help and search crews narrowed in on her location. The girl's mother says she's doing okay and is ready to start the second grade. Idaho Fish and Game is considering a wildlife feeding program for winter after a devastating summer of wildfires. An advisory committee will assess conditions statewide once the fires die down. The committee will meet this fall and throughout the winter, making recommendations to the director of Fish and Game. Emergency winter feeding could be considered if there's concern for public safety or a large animal die off. We are going to be proactive where we can be, uh, such as has been the case with the paddock fire, and uh, we're going to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. The agency is asking the public not to feed wildlife on their own. Ideally, animals will be able to survive without fish and game intervening, intervening rather. but the ultimate goal is to minimize impacts on big game populations. A trial date has been set for the Idaho inmate who's accused of murdering an elderly Julietta man. This happened earlier this year while the inmate was on the run. The judge presided the case enter, entered a not guilty plea for Skyler Mead where he will be facing the death penalty. Mead is currently serving a life sentence for his prison escape in Ada County. His trial is expected to last six weeks and begins February 3rd in Nez Perce County. Well, that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head over to our website, creme.com. Today, the 14-year-old alleged shooter accused of killing four people at a high school in Georgia faced a judge today. His father was in court shortly after. The teenager faces four counts of murder for Wednesday's shooting that killed two teachers and two students. His dad, 54-year-old Colin Gray, is charged with second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. Investigators say he bought his son the weapon used in the shooting as a Christmas gift. This was months after his son allegedly made school shooting threats. Prosecutors say the alleged shooter could face more charges for the nine people injured in the attack. And that was Creme to News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.